Hello every pony and welcome to Doom Pie. I'm Scar89 here to do a reading for his channel because why hey why not the heck and why not yeah. So uh today uh I'm going to read to you Fluttershy Kicks a Puppy. So yeah, um I hope you enjoy it, I guess. Okay. Fluttershy Kicks a Puppy by some person who doesn't seem to have a doesn't seem fan fiction doesn't seem to show the author anymore. That's weird. I liked it that way. Um do 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 doesn't seem to have any author uh name here for some stupid reason. Okay, so Fluttershy Kicks a Puppy by some person. Um, so yeah, Fluttershy Kicks a Puppy. How could you? Fluttershy tore off the end of the gauze with her teeth and finished wrapping the squirrel's leg. There you go, little one, she cooed, patting the creature on the head. Isn't that better? The squirrel flexed its bandaged foreleg and grinned. Leaping up, it hugged the mare around her neck, nuzzling her face with a furry cheek. Fluttershy giggled and waved as it scampered back into the trees. Dropping the bandage roll back in her first aid kit, she perked her head up and scanned the park, searching out any other wounded animals in need of help. Golden sunlight dappled through the thin canopy of expertly pruned trees. The smell of fresh-cut sod and uh, evaporating dew filled the park with a spellbindingly distil distillation of early summer. Fluttershy smiled broadly. Fluttershy, Fluttershy smiled broadly cut up to the seasonal magic. She loved autumn's rich red and gold palette, winter's muffled and crisp introspective white, and spring's vibrant greens of new life. But summer was her true passion of warm golds and earthy greens, a season of activity for her furry friends. The big city bustled, ta uh, bustled time that all wild wildlife took part in. Fluttershy was in her element. Finding no more patience in need of assistance, the mare took another long breath of sweet air and grabbed her pack. As she lifted the first aid kit in her mouth, something hit her back leg with a soft thump. A soccer ball drifted half a foot back from where it struck, shiny and grass-stained in the afternoon sun. A group of ten colts and fillies waved at Fluttershy from the open field several yards away. Uh, cr uh, cringed smiles on their faces. Oh wait, that's, that's my my bad. Chagrined, ch chagrined smiles on their faces. Whatever that is, disheveled manes and dirty coat coats matched their displaced ball. A chestnut-colored colt cupped his hooves around his muzzle and called out, "Sorry, little help." Yes, of course. Fluttershy chimed, far too quiet to be heard by the foals. She set down her medical supplies on the grass and lined up to kick the ball over to the group. Not a pony for sports, she frowned in concentration. Dead set on a clean and well-aimed strike. I bet I know what's going to happen. She's going to end up accidentally kicking a puppy, isn't she? It would be embarrassing for the ball to go wide or fall too short. Uh, they were just foals, but their derisive laughter, oh, their derisive laughter would be awful. She suppressed a shudder. Willing the echoing chant of Fluttershy, Fluttershy, Fluttershy can hardly fly from her head. Those fears had been conquered. Resolutely, she swept a foreleg back. The high pitched yaps came too late. Chasing after a worn and bitten tennis ball, a shaggy golden retriever puppy, barely larger than a cat, bounded in front of Fluttershy's accelerating hoof. The mare's eyes widened and her mouth fell open in shock. Her a fascinating leg not responding to her frantic mental commands to stop. Her blood ran cold as her hoof connected to the puppy's rib cage. I knew it. I knew it. Look, look who's the smart guy here. <laughs> not me. With a yelp of surprise, the dog was lifted from his paws. To Fluttershy's horror, her leg continued on its trajectory, sweeping the dog into, into the soccer ball. For a moment, the puppy was suspended in midair before her face, his tongue... Uh, in midair before her face, his tongue lolling from its, his open jaw, eyes wide with confusion, shaggy blonde fur splayed out in the breeze. 
Time froze in that instant as waves of regret crashed around that the quiet Pegasus. The dog was just a baby, innocent, innocent to the world and its cruel jeers. No pony had ever called him worthless, she suspected. No pony accused him of wasting times and fears or making a big deal out of nothing. A fresh-faced babe with his whole life ahead of him, full of hope and wonder. And she, Fluttershy, a mare dedicated to helping all life, had taken the innocence and kicked it. Or taken that innocence and kicked it. With a whine, the poor beast landed four feet in front of her, rolling to a stop. A mewling whimper punctured, uh, punctured his breathing, tongue still hanging from his mouth. His eyes regarded Fluttershy with dazed surprise. Fluttershy, so intuitive and empathetic with animals, could read a thousand, thousand, one thousand thoughts in those watery orbs. Pain was clearest. She hadn't wounded the creature critter critically but he was suffering possibly for the first real time in his short life next she saw confusion the poor dog didn't fully comprehend what had caused his predicament and was still processing processing what had happened below that was the worst thing fluttershy saw the betrayal his was the same look in the eyes of a foal when he discovered for the first time that an adult has lied to him probably about the stork or santa hooves the death of innocent. The soccer ball, thrown clear from uh, the momentum of the kick, rolled listlessly back to the wide-eyed foals. Frozen in place, the soccer ball. The soccer players felt the joy of the game bleed out of their bodies. The noises of the park fell away for them. The birds' calls, the chirping insects, the distant laughter, all muted by the unfolding horror. Sound came back all at once when a frost-blue-coated filly shouted, "How could you!" with a wavering trill of threatening tears on her voice. Fluttershy st uh, started scanning the group of soccer players. Jaws hung down in abject shock, anger, and wet eyes trained squarely on the timid mare. Their voices wove together in a tapestry of, ha in a tapestry of hate. That poor puppy! What did it ever do to you? Somebody help that dog! That evil mare kicked that puppy! How could anybody kick a puppy? The words crowded around Fluttershy as if given physical substance, bearing down on her mind. Knees shaking, she grabbed her first aid kit and hurried to the fallen dog, but the folds rushed her and blocked off her path. She shrunk back and stepped as their tones shifted from reproach, from reproach, reproach to rage. You stay away from that poor puppy! Fluttershy, her voice uh, devoid of any power, uh, squeaked out, Um, excuse me, but I treat animals and haven't you done enough damage? Oh, that was a... F Haven't you done enough damage? A mint green unicorn filly yelled, drowning her out. It was an accident, and I can help. Just get out of here! Fluttershy's voice grew more and more falsetto as the tirade continued, and she quaked under the accusatory stares. The voices grew angrier still, tearing and biting at the main psyche, the mayor's psyche. She struggled to push through to the dog, but the force of their presence held her back. Mentally, they were joined by the conjoling taunts of her past. A dozen classmates calling out her weak wings and lack of confidence. <coughs> Sorry. All at once, her nerve broke. Anger and cruel laughter plagued her mind. She fled from the jeers and stares. Galloping hard along the cobbled path of the park, she blinked the tears from her eyes as best she could. She charged through the downtown or she charged through downtown Ponyville, chased by the ghosts of both her past and her present. Beads of moisture sprung from her eyes and uh, to trail behind her in glitter glittering specks as she waved through the busy market and past town hall. Her vision blurred past the point of easy dis uh, screen discernment, but she continued to race down the dirt road leading to her cottage, relying more on memory than sight. Finally, after far too long, the hazy smudge of her home loomed into her partially impaired view. Breathing hard, she flung the door to her house wide, bolted inside, and slammed it shut with the, f her f with the full weight of her body. Blinking furiously, chest heaving like a massive uh, bellows, uh, she slid inch by inch down the door. Midway down, her hind legs gave out and she collapsed to the floor. The first aid kit in her jaw mocked her. With a loud shriek, she sent it sailing across the room. She curled up into a ball to cover her face and trembled with shame. Oh, no. She cried into her hooves. 
What did I do? <laughs> she sobbed softly, rocking back and forth on the bare wood floor, wooden floorboards. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> what did I do? A soft furry tap on her knee pulled her back to reality. She sniffed wetly and rubbed at her face with both forelegs, peeking a blurry out, a blurry eyed out into the cruel world. Angel stared at her expectantly. Her head, co his head cocked so far sideways that one floppy ear rested on his shoulder. She sniffed her, or she sniffed her snout clear and, or, yeah, she sniffed it her, she sniffed her snout clear and shakily sat up. Hi, Angel," she said miserably. "What's the matter?" The little bunny shrugged his shoulders and tapped on her belly. "Oh, you're hungry." She started to pull herself up until Angel shook his head empathetically. N "No." Her head grabbed her hoof and his tiny paws and gave her a big-eyed stare. Fluttershy's uh, ears flat or flattened. "Oh, you want to know what's?" What's wrong with me? She laid back down on the floor, staring in, off into space. Nothing's wrong. She hugged him. Angel hugged himself to her chest, nuzzling her with a whiskery cheek. Nothing's wrong except I, I. She bit back a sob, tears running from her eyes. I kicked a poor little puppy. <laughs> She covered her face again, curling around the little rabbit. She wrapped her tail around herself and whimpered. Time passed at a crawl. Eventually, Fluttershy's eyes dried and her quivering ceased, leaving her motionless and staring off into space. She thoughtlessly tracked dust. Uh, sorry. She thoughtlessly tracked dust motes sailing through sunbeams, an all-encompassing, lengthy, uh, uh, leather. Lethargy gripping her limbs and pinning her down. Uncomprehending of the passage of time, Fluttershy only became aware of her surrounding as her body's complaints slowly sliced through her cloudy mind. Her hips and shoulders throbbed dully, pained against the unforgiven, unforgiving floor. Her throat, already compliant from the frantic run, felt cracked and rough. She swallowed dryly to keep it from gluing itself shut. The need to relieve herself crept slowly up from the mere, the minor annoyance of uh, mountaining urgency. Fluttershy slowly stood. At some point during her exile from conscious thought, Angel had rolled himself into a ball and fallen asleep against her belly. She moved carefully to not disturb him, stepping silently over his snoring body and skirting down the hall to her restroom. Empty bladder, or empty bladder and full glass of water in tow, Fluttershy silently wandered through the living room, assorted supplies of animal care covering every conceivable inch throughout the cozy space, kept her resting her attention. Gilded bird cages, or gilded bird cages, carpeted climbs for cats to scratch, plastic tubes for hamsters or ferrets to scurry through, bags of feed, bags of sawdust, bags of bedding. The plastic tubes for hamster and ferrets to scurry through. That kind of reminds me of uh, Tube City from, I think it was Tube City from uh, uh, The Office. That would be uh, awesome. I mean, think about it. Running tubes all over through an entire building and then putting hamsters. Call them Tube City. I think it was Tube City. I can't remember. I'll have to check that up later. But it's funny, isn't it? I, I just think it's so hilarious. I think you should go check The Office out if you haven't seen it because it's so funny. I'm sure you've seen a little bit of it. You know, because everyone has. Okay. Uh, there was no way for her to deny the truth. Fluttershy lived in a fully stocked pet store. <sighs> Sorry, I keep yawning for some reason. She sighed and climbed onto the couch, sipping her water. She felt empty. Scanning the room, all she could find were reminders of her animal friends. When she uh, felt down, Fluttershy would take refuge in her work, tending her uh, mangeries and helping the wild creatures that always found their way to her doorstep. Sometimes they weren't even hurt, just looking for a kind ear and a hug. Fluttershy, or Fluttershy loved to provide hugs. Oh, I could even hug sometimes. The mare's mind began to wander. She often found herself reflecting on her life and experiences with other ponies. Ponies weren't like animals. 
Okay, that's an odd sentence. Ponies weren't like animals. Well, okay. With animals, Fluttershy always knew what to do, whether it was dressing a wound or setting a, settling a dispute. Even temperamental cr creatures, from irate cockatrices to rampaging dragons, fell to her force of will. But ponies couldn't be controlled like that. Well, ponies didn't listen to f and or ponies didn't listen, and Fluttershy spent most of her life in fear of others. She never knew what to say or where to put her hooves. When she made eye contact, her voice wavered and her joints trembled. She was afraid of their laughter and their anger, but she was also afraid of their complaints. Or I mean compliments. Compliments, yeah. It was all a form of attention, and in the spotlight of another pony's gaze, Fluttershy didn't know what to do with herself. Thinking about it made her anxious. Most things having to do with ponies made her anxious. With ponies, she was out of her element. So, she would escape. Her animals didn't judge her the way ponies did. At least not that Fluttershy could actually understand. When they directed attention at her, she didn't qu uh, quiver. They had been her salvation all those years ago when she fell from the sky. Her true calling, her destiny. When the world of ponies got to be too much, she would turn to the critter critters. In social situations, she'd remnants and escape, if only in her mind. You know, Fletcher would make the best, like, Pokemon trainer, or at least Pokemon breeder in the whole universe, just saying. Setting the empty gla- which you can check out on my channel, by the way, on uh, Hoenshai, if you want to check that one out. Yeah. Setting the empty glass carefully on the floor, Fluttershy laid down on the couch and hid behind her mane and hooves, blocking out the room. How was she supposed to escape, when everything to do with animals reminded her of the puppy? The rays of golden sunlight moved across the floor. Fluttershy laid in a complete stupor as the world passed her by. With a longed stretch, Angel woke up and hopped over to the couch. Not now, Angel, Fluttershy sighed, rolling away from, her, from his poking paws. I don't want to talk about it. He hopped onto the couch and prodded her more forcefully. She sighed again. Reluctantly, she rolled back over and faced the little rabbit. It's that puppy, Angel. I didn't mean to kick him. I was just trying to kick a soccer ball back to some fools. He jumped in the way and next thing I knew, I... Her voice hitched, forcing her to swallow thickly. Oh, it was so sad. I didn't mean to hurt him. I really didn't. Angel nodded solemnly and patted a hoof and uh, patted a hoof in consolation. All oh, those foals, they were terrible. I couldn't even look at the little deer to make sure he was okay. Whipping his chin thoughtfully, Angel shrugged and raised an eyebrow. <sighs> Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me tonight, or at least lately with all these readings. Fluttershy said, uh, "I am." Fluttershy sat up and gave the bunny a reproachful look. Well, of course I tried. They wouldn't let me through. They just kept yelling at me. Angel blinked at her. I guess you're right. They were just fools. I should have been more forceful. A floppy ear twitched. Fluttershy nodded with resignation. That's exactly right, Angel. They got loud and I got quiet. Next thing I knew... She inhaled deeply through her snout, closing her eyes. Slowly she released and held... Uh, she released the held breath and fixed her gaze on the rabbit. I was back in flight school. She pinched the bridge of her muzzle with her both hooves and rubbed her face vigorously. It's not fair, Angel. I thought I'd gotten over this. Angel cocked his head to the side. Yeah, she agreed miserably. I guess some things you never get over all the way. I wish I knew what to do now. Twitching his pink nose, the bunny gestured to the door. Fluttershy, or Fluttershy's uh, wavery eyes hardened and she sat up straight and tall. You're right, Angel. Just because my fears got the better of me doesn't mean I have to give up. It'll always be a problem, but that's not what this is about. It's about how I deal with these problems. She puffed out her ch chest and leapt from the couch. I just have to march myself back to the park and check on that puppy. It's the right thing to do, and it's what I was born to do. Hefting the discarded first aid kit off the floor, she continued. Every pony makes mistakes. That doesn't ruin who some pony is. It's what they do to fix those mistakes that def that defines character. She lifted a hoof triumphantly, shaking it at the cruel world. She turned a radiant smile towards the puffy rabbit. Thank you, Angel. You always know just what to say. Angel bounced on the couch twice. Of course you can. Hold on. She trotted onto the 
ki or she trotted into the kitchen, humming gently to herself. She grabbed a knife from the wood block and a cucumber from the pantry, slicing it quickly uh, onto the plate. She plopped the plate onto the floor and cantered out of her cottage as Angel hopped to his meal and gobbled it down greedily. Fluttershy held her head high as she trotted along the road. The late afternoon air held promises of strengthening growth, and the Pegasus found a bounce had entered her gate. She humbly, or she hummed merrily, swarms of butterfly racing through her memories. She made her way back through Ponyville, torn between enjoying the scenery and getting back to the park and checking on the dog. When she arrived, she found the group of foals were still gathered around the puppy, blocking it from view. Flush I approached cautiously, nerves settling back over her frame, causing her heart to race and her hooves to tremor. She quelled her raising fears and cleared her throat. Tin head swiveled, uh, swiveled, expressions shifting him from curiosity to animosity as they regarded the Pegasus. The chestnut colt opened his mouth, but Fluttershy spoke first, injecting confidence into her voice. I know you're angry at me, but what happened was an accident. I take care of animals. I was here at the park to treat some of the wild ones when this happened. Let me through so I can help the poor thing. The colt looked mutinous, standing with hackles raised. She st Isn't that a cat thing? Standing with hackles raised, he stated... Or he started to advance when the mint green filly caught his shoulder. She was just kicking our soccer ball back. But, Fluttershy strode past the two foals and knelt down over the puppy. The dog immediately recognized and whimpered. Shh, she cooed. It's okay. Let's take a look at you, little guy. He quieted, uh, he quieted down and Fluttershy pressed a hoof to his muzzle. She felt around his ribcage and checked his heart rate. It became apparently uh, very... But it became apparent very quickly that after the surprise wore off, the dog started milk milking his injuries for attention. His side was a little tender, but no worse than a bruise. His cold, wet nose and gentle heartbeat told the story clear as day. Oh, you little faker, she teased, opening up her kit and pulled out a dog biscuit. Here you go, sweetie. A treat if you, a, a treat if you jump for it. The t puppy sprung to his paws, lunging for the cookie. His shaggy blonde tail wagging excitedly. He bore down on his front legs, rump wiggling in the air. Fluttershy giggled and tossed the biscuit. Flashing into the air, the puppy snatched it up and crunched away happily. He's okay! The foals cheered together and crowded around the dog, petting his head and scratching behind his ears. Grinning, Fluttershy picked up her kit and turned to leave. The chestnut colt stood behind her. Uh, his ears flat to his head and eyes downcast. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, ma'am. Fluttershy shuffled awkwardly. It's okay. I love animals, too. I'd be angry if I thought some pony was mistreating one on purpose. He looked at her hopefully. No hard feelings? She smiled warmly and extended a hoof. He shook it and beamed. Uh, okay. A small whine brought Fluttershy's attention back to the puppy. The other foals had begun playing with the puppy using their soccer ball and uh, using their soccer ball and after several tosses the dog had begun breathing hard. Fluttershy frowned and, re and reopened her kit. She rooted around and found a small bottle of painkillers. Come here, little one. Limping slightly, the puppy came over and sat, wiggling his tail idly. She pulled off the cap with her teeth and dropped a pill onto her hoof. This will make you feel all better. The, dog's eye, the dog eyed the pill warily. Go on, it's medicine. A pink tongue darted out and slurped the white speck away. There you go. Uh, reared up on its hind legs, the puppy l lapped at her cheek and she giggled. Oh, you're just a li you're such a, sorry. Oh, you are just such a sweetie. She frowned, scanning the park. Whose are you anyway, fella? She scratched behind his ear. The chestnut colt cleared his throat. He's, uh, mine. His name's Copper. Copper, huh? Oh, such a nice little doggy you are, Copper. She turned her head and smiled at the colt. I'm awfully sorry I kicked your puppy. It really was an accident. I, I know, he sighed, looking down at his hooves. I should have been keeping an eye better eye on him. I just got so wrapped up in the game, I didn't notice when he wandered off. His blue eyes were trained on the grass, partially hidden under his dark brown mane. When I saw what happened, I was angry at myself, too. 
I took it out on you. Fluttershy gave Copper one last pet, flopping his ear ears back and forth and turning all the way to face the cult. What's your name? Fetch. Well, Fetch. Fluttershy swept her mane away from her face and offered the cult a knowing grin. Every pony makes mistakes sometimes. If we didn't, we'd never learn anything. But that doesn't ruin who some pony is. It's not that you made a mistake. She lifted his head with a hoof. It's how you deal with the mistakes that says the most about you. She turned and looked at Copper. The medicine had already uh, kicked in and he was back on his paws, rambunctiously chasing the other nine foals as they kicked the soccer ball back and forth. He barked with excitement, driving off the ball when it or diving on the ball when it came close, making it bounce away between his legs in a random direction. Copper's gonna be fine, so don't you worry. Fetch grinned, wiping at his muzzle with a hoof. Thank you, ma'am, for coming back and looking at him. Fluttershy smirked, a mischievous uh, glittering in her eyes. As I said, every pony makes mistakes, and it's how you deal with them that says the most about you. Fetch chuckled and ran back to the discordant game of soccer. Fluttershy sat on her haunches and watched for a few minutes, feeling the weight that had settled on her heart melt completely away. Copper had responded well to her to her immediately. The foals had given her a chance and she had made things right. In the end, they had given her their thanks and let her be. No eyes on her to make her feel anxious. No derisive, uh, derisive laughter. No glares. No hate. When she closed her eyes, she saw the puppy uh, reared up tall to lick her face, the squirrel nuzzling her cheek, Angel hugging her chest. Her fears and worries quietly crept away and locked themselves in the back of her mind. It was summer. Animals flourished in the warmth, a time of activity, a time of exploration, a time of growth. Spring was a time for, for newness, but summer was a time for strengthening. Fluttershy was in her element. She opened her eyes when she felt a tap at her hoof. The soccer ball, leapt upon by Cooper, Cooper had shot free of the foals and skidded over to her uh, sitting place. Please just pick it up and give it back to them this time. Fetch smiled warmly at her, holding uh, onto the, excite the excited puppy. Fleshy grinned and stood up. She cocked her leg back. No, not again. The ball fired straight and true from her kick. Fetch's eyes went wide as it approached far faster and higher than either her, he or Fluttershy had expected. Too late, he tried to raise his forelegs to block, smashing into his muzzle. The ball rebounded sharply off the right of, uh, sharply to the right and into the left eye of the mint green filly. As Fetch fell, clutching his red ste streaming snout, the ball ricocheted into another full, uh, directly in the ear. The green filly began to rub at her darkening eye as the ball continued to uh, rain of Begin, uh, continued its reign of destruction. Oh, no, no, no. Bouncing sharply off of jaws, snouts, necks, and knees, defying the laws of physics, the ball picked up speed as it... What? Is this ball made of flubber or something? What? Defying the laws of physics, the ball picked up speed as it bounced from one player to the next. The park filled with surprised yelps. Fluttershy started in, or stared in horror. Half the foals were down, Grasping their bruises and battered faces and moaning wretchedly, tears and blood streamed from faces. Purple and swollen snouts wiped at mis wiped at miserably. The hitching whines of surprised crying covered the groans from the smallest filly, rubbing at her cuffed ear. The other half, of the, or the other half of the players, mystified by their good fortune at avoiding the bouncing sphere of pain, started uh, stared back at her numbly. The groans of their friends, the groans of their friends at their hooves gradually cut through the days, and their eyes slowly narrowed from shock to anger. Here we go again. Fluttershy's jaw slacked, and her eyes wide glanced from one fuming face to the next, then down at the fallen fillies and colts nursing their wounds. Her eyes trailed to the grass and bloodstained ball, wrestling where it had rolled listlessly away from the group. Copper yapped and pounced on it again. Fetch sat up slowly, his eyes puffy red, his voice made unnaturally nasal by his smashed muzzle. His, uh, or, sorry. His voice made unnaturally nasal by his smashed muzzle was filled with hurt and betrayal. The voice of a foal discovering for the first time that an adult had lied to him. The death of innocence. How could you? 
Fluttershy screamed in anguish and ran. The end. Oh my god. Arthur's note. Born from a conversation about the definition of out of character comes a little Fluttershy character study. One of my editors, Ixrizidiz, E-C-H-R-I-E-D-I-Z, I -E don't know, and I frequently bash poor Fluttershy and joke during edits or on Skype, even though she's one of my favorite characters. For what I mean by Flutter bashing, think of mentally advanced series take on her. Flyerfly, you're so useless. My name's Fluttershy. I know what your name is. One of the great things about FIM is the depth of character and Fluttershy is no different. Not really. She has almost no character because they don't touch on it! She has a lot going on her head and it's fun to delve in for a little while. Just to be clear, this is not meant to hate on poor Fluttershy. She's one of my favorite characters and it's a rule for writers to be mean to the characters they love. Cheers! What? What? That story was so weird, but it was good. You have to admit, that was a pretty good story. Um, and this is going for not too long, but it's pretty, pretty good, so yeah. Um, thanks for watching Doom Pie, and uh, uh, go subscribe to him if you haven't, because uh, if you haven't, you're not cool enough to be a brony. Okay, yes, you are. You're pretty cool. You're cool. Yeah, yeah I ain't mad. I ain't even disappoint. So yeah, um, just subscribe to Doom Pie. Um, run over on to my channel. Scar89 and get some other readings. Uh, I do just regular readings like this, but I also do professional readings where I actually edit the video and put music in sometimes, and it's very good, and you'd love it. And yeah, I've been talking this whole time. Uh, yeah, so yeah, subscribe to Doompie. Go check out uh, check out me on my channel if you want to. Um, and uh, I guess that's all. So. Uh, Keep calm and brony on, everypony. Yeah!